Hi, I'm Robert Lee. I own Coleman Liquidation. I sell mobile homes. I'm not going to waste your time. I'm going to tell it just like it is. These are mobile homes, not mansions. They come in two pieces. If that's what you're looking for, that's what I got. They're used. Some of them have stains. We cover that up. She decorates them. She sells them. These guys help me move them. bouncer in Birmingham hit me in the face with a crescent wrench five times. And my wife's boyfriend broke my jaw with a fence post. So if you don't buy a trailer from me, it ain't gonna hurt my feelings. So come on down to Coleman Liquidation and get yourself a home. Or don't. I don't care. I love local commercials. All right. Just want to make sure that <clears throat> everybody can see a blue screen that says how to make money with mobile homes. This is uh, Gary DeBose, and I just want to make sure that everybody's uh, on the same page. Brandon, it looks like you're one that can type to me, so would you type and make sure you can see a blue tape page? And we're going to try once to change the page and make sure everybody can see it. Here we go. But Brandon, real quick, type back if, you, if your page changed, then go ahead and tell me if your page changed. Was that a yes? I know you guys can see my screen. I just want to make sure that the changed pages, if you can see it says how to make money with mobile homes and then go to the next one. Yes, it did. All right, here we go. I appreciate you guys being here tonight, and uh, we are um, excited for you to be here to tell you about mobile homes. We we think it's one of the greatest ways to make money and to make a residual income with mobile homes. Um, people are going to tell you a little bit crazy. I kind of get tickled sometimes at what people think when you... Um, you talk about mobile homes because they have such a negative connotation sometimes with some people. And uh, I get kind of tickled because they don't understand they're, they are, they are little money makers. Um, we are, we do different kinds of mobile homes. We normally have not done mobile homes on land, but now we're getting to where we do some for rentals and we're looking at some for around here in uh, Savannah area, outside of Savannah a little bit between Savannah, Rinkin and Guyton. Um, but we're going to talk about mobile homes that are in a mobile home park today and um, go through and, and show you some of these and what they are, what to look for. And then we're going to talk about how to do them and the money. If you've renovated anything and fix it up nice for your family and made it where your house has something new and beautiful in it, that is not how we fix mobile homes. What we do for mobile homes, we make them livable and usable. Those are two very important words to write down. Livable and usable. Um, super important that, that that's what you're looking for. So let's learn a little bit on how to make money with these and uh, see what happens uh, from there. Um, all right. Mobile homes are not beautiful. I'm going to show you a picture of one we call the Hulk. And uh, this thing is not pretty. It don't have pretty colors. It's not a pretty a mobile home itself. Uh, it's just an average home uh, that you're going to look at. And here's what's going to happen. When you talk about it, what you think when you first see it probably will be what people will say. Your friends are not going to uh, be excited. You know, when you start bragging about doing mobile homes, I got tickled the first time I did it. I had done one. I called my father and said, Dad, I want to do uh, mobile homes. He's like, son, what's wrong with you? And I said, no, Dad, these things make a lot of money. So I bought one in Arkansas. I'm going to show it to you here in a little bit. And my dad says to me, uh, uh, what are you doing, son? Uh, these, this is crazy. I'm like, no, Dad, mobile homes are awesome. Let me explain it to you. So I sat down one afternoon on the phone from Hawaii and told my dad what we're doing on mobile homes. 
He said, all right, I'll find you some. So he found me three in St. Charles, Missouri area outside called St. Charles County. And I was excited to get these three mobile homes, bought them. He had, uh, I had him pay guys to come and fix them up. We fixed them up, put them on the market, sold them all on payments. So we did that about four more times that year. I think that was, I think I had nine maybe. So maybe a few more times than that, but I think I had nine mobile homes. And then for like four months, I didn't get any mobile homes from my father. And I was buying them other places, but I didn't get any from my father. Only to realize when I called my dad and said, dad, are they not selling any mobile homes in uh, St. Charles County anymore? You're not coming across any great deals. And he said, son, I can't look for your homes. I'm too busy doing my own. And my dad from that time on has done mobile homes all by himself. Um, without me, with his own money. Well, I'm okay with it because someday I guess it'll be my money. Um, and he's been flipping mobile homes now for probably 13, 14 years. And uh, just doing great, has many of them paying him, has a great income coming in every month. And a matter of fact, he just told me last month, I'm done, I'm not taking any more mobile homes. And I said, that's amazing, dad, I'll believe that when I see it. He called me a couple of days ago and said he took one back ready. Um, they are the gift that keeps on giving. All right, here we go. Not the most beautiful thing in the world. This we call the, the, uh, Hulk. It's, it's massive. It's 80 foot long. It's, uh, about 12 foot wide. It has three bedrooms and, uh, this thing, you look at it, you think that's just horrible. I bought it in, um, May of 2009, I think. I, Finally had it paid off not too long ago, um, and it's been paying almost every month since then. Uh, month after month after month, these things just keep on paying, and they sometimes they move out of them. Here's funny. They try to get their life together. They try to save up some money. They try to build up a future, and as soon as they do it, um, they go and get an apartment, and then they want to sell their mobile home, but they owe me money on it, and they can't sell it right away. So they often I'll say, look, I won't come after you for the money. We'll call it even. You just give me the home back and we'll turn it over again. This home, um, the first year alone, made $5,723 in profit. So now that big green beast is a lot better looking. Um, we The park gave us this home. We put $1,140 something dollars in it. They put $3,000 down and paid, I think, $2,400 uh, in those, let's see, is that right? Let's see, two, um, three, they paid $3,600, sorry, that's right, $3,600, and then when we paid off the thing, we made about $5,723 uh, with everything done. They had a couple of late payments, which upped the money a little bit. Uh, I charged a hefty $100, $125 late fee when you're late one day, um, and so that, that's kind of, that's what the, the green bolt, the, the Hulk looked like. I asked this one, would you get, what would you give $2,600 for? And if you could give something that $2,600, by the way, this is my first trailer. You're getting ready to see right now. The first trailer I've ever done. I gave $2,600 for this trailer and it looked just like that. The day I bought it, I got, it came along with the bad porch, uh, the car that's on the far back side, and that, uh, a camper top right there, that camper shell. I sold the camper shell for 25 bucks. That's how it came right there. That's how I got it, the first trailer I ever had. And you say, well, you know, that's $2,600 for that trailer seems like a lot. But if it pays you 300 a month for 19 months without stopping, so let's say 20 is $6,000, and you put $2,600 in it, it's pretty good. The, the thing is, is they weren't paid off in those 19 months. I got it back and I sold that thing again. And so I sold it again and again. Now I want you to look at it, knowing that it's bringing you in twice your money in one and a half years, and then it's gonna keep paying you for another four or five years after you've paid it off and you've gotten all your money back. My question is, now does it look a lot better? To me, it does. In Northern Arkansas, I bought one. And I bought a condo in Las Vegas the same week. The condo in Las Vegas, I fixed it up. Uh, all I did was paint it, by the way. I didn't even put carpet in it. I made $11,400. This trailer uh, that you see here, and it's uh, some, of you, some of you guys may have a screen that is white. That's because that's I've never seen the trailer. 
this trailer, a guy called me and said, I want to, I want to buy a mobile home. I know that you finance them. I've seen your ads and uh, he's in Arkansas. I says, can I, uh, I've found a mobile homes right down the street. I would, I would buy it. Could you buy it? And then I would make you payments. And so I went to the guy that was selling it for $9,000 and told him that I would buy it. He said, well, it's got to be moved. And I said, well, I've got to find a mover. Let me call you back. And I found a mover who would do it for 850 bucks. So I told this guy, I'll finance it. I'll buy it and I'll move it with the 850 bucks. You pay me $12,900. He's like, okay. So $12,900. I bought the trailer for $1,500 because the guy had to move it or he had to keep paying the lot rent. I moved it for 850. And uh, the mover actually found me two other trailers. So it was very profitable to meet that mover. That mover moved it to another place. It has stayed there to this day. And this is the one I think they paid off two or three months ago. He had hurt his back once. He had broken his foot once. Every year, there's some kind of story that puts them two or three thousand behind. And I start over and charge them a two or three thousand dollar penalty. And they just keep paying. So it's really like they're just paying rent, but they just keep on giving. But now it's paid off and I don't get any more money for it. I did eventually get to go see it and took a couple pictures of it, but I don't have the pictures anymore. My, uh, I lost them to one of my computers, but literally I bought it, moved it, set it up, moved the people in it and financed it. I uh, had the guy go into a bank and notarize my financing and paid on it for, I, I want to say 12, 11 years. And I've never seen, never saw the trailer, but once in those, in that whole time. And it was pretty nice. They had it fixed up, had some big dogs out back, but still it was pretty nice. In the first one year and two months, it paid back $3,265. And then now it's just kept paying, kept paying, kept paying. All right, let's look at a mobile home park. Um, we have uh, mobile home parks. This one is the finest place, um, four, I think. And um, mobile home parks are very, um, very lucrative in some areas, but here's a problem. The city is after you all the time. They want you to fix the skirting and they want you to mow the grass and they want you to do this. There's all kinds of upkeep. Then you have water lines, sewer lines, electric lines. You have gravel or you have asphalt, you have curbs, you have yards, you have trees that fall or could fall on mobile homes or get struck by lightning. There's all kinds of upkeep money you have to do. Um, the fun thing when I sell a trailer in, in any mobile home park anywhere, they call me and say, hey, my hot water heater broke. And I'm like, wow, hey, is the uh, is the dirt around your trailer a problem? I'm like, no. OK, well, um, you know, that that that's the only thing I take care of is the dirt around your, your 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 trailer. Well, that was pretty cool, except you have a lot of upkeep on that dirt. So I found a way to let someone else have the upkeep on the dirt and I just buy and flip and keep selling the trailers. And and uh, it's pretty, pretty amazing about what you can do. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk a little bit about mobile homes real quick. I'm going to give you an idea of what they are. And then I want to share with you uh, the, the money because it's quite amazing. Um, it's, it's shocking to me how many people can't make it or can't buy trailers. And then we have three or four people that have just bought so many trailers uh, that, that it's unbelievable. Um, we have one lady that works with us. She also does uh, houses with us. She's doing a house right now in uh, Virginia, but she, she has done multiple trailers, has thousands and thousands of dollars coming in every month. And she just keeps selling at 15 or $17,000 at uh, 14, 15, 20% interest. And she's making a killing on them. Uh, and people just keep buying them. She keeps taking them back and renovating them. And she's making a great income every month off of all those trailers and probably has $300,000 total uh, owed to her uh, on all the trailers through the time. Dan Nelson, I don't know if he's on here, but one of the guys that works with us in Chicago, he got a mobile home park guy to just keep giving the trailer. Every time he fixed one up and flip it, that guy would get lot rent. That's all the guy wanted was lot rent. So he just kept giving Dan a trailer. Dan keep, kept making them nicer and nicer and financing them. The upkeep of the park kind of grew and got better. And Dan's still making money this day. He's been in Florida for uh, going on now, gosh, nine years, eight and a half years. And, he, and he's still making money off of the trailers. Uh, that he had up in uh, Chicago. So it's very lucrative. All right, let's look at some of these. There's some things when you look at trailers you want to watch. You want to make sure the skirting is good. That's the 
bright white, white part um, right here at the bottom. Let's see if I can kind of draw something around it here. That 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 part at the bottom there is um, what's what we call the skirting. And the skirting there is important to have on because if it's not on and you buy one, they may make you um, fix it. So it's important to have skirting. And they have all kinds of skirting and good skirting. This mobile home we want to look at is got some rough problems. Here they are. If you look on top, I'm going to try to kind of give you some marks here so you can see it. There's rust right in these areas here. And there's also uh, a window here that looks bad. And let me go back to the picture so you can see it. I'll clear it up for you. And um, you can see the window has been opened up bigger than it's supposed to be. So now the air conditioner is cut into the wall instead of into the window like it's supposed to be. The roof has rust on it. That is because things from these trees, all these pine needles are standing out and it's rusting out the roof. You need to go and either put a new roof on there or at least clean that roof up. Fix a lot of the things like this window in the air conditioner, make it correct the way it's supposed to be. Uh, and then, of course, it needed a new deck. If you can see it here, the deck is sagging. You just got to go when you look at them, look for the things that you've got to fix that cost money. I like to find mobile homes that are in a nicer park. Um, if you see some of the cars in this park, they're a little bit more expensive cars because the park is nicer. It has curbs. Um, it's in much better condition. The trailers look good. Now, there's three types of trailers that I want you to see here. This is a really old trailer back here in the back in the 60s. This one is about an 84, and this one is about a 76. You know that because it has like a little outcropping right here on the front, and those are like 73 to 79. These were made with a bad siding back in the 80s, so that's how we know what that one is. This one has no outcroppings, but it still has the uh, top across the front is the late 60s, early 70s. It's important to know what a trailer is because how much uh, upkeep it, it needs to have. And so you need to really get where you learn those. There's a lot of information. Our trailer days, we'll go through all that stuff. I'm talking about them. Um, those who have been on a webinar before have seen this one. This is my I Got in Trouble trailer. I bought this trailer uh, in Fayetteville, South Carolina when I lived in Hawaii. I was all excited about this trailer because I actually drove to it. I, I did a, a class with somebody. And I came over to this trailer and saw it, bought it from the guy. But when he left, he took the garage. So you want to make sure when you write a contract now, if I see a garage or I see something there, I write it because it was not a part of the trailer. It's not connected. So I bought the trailer. The trailer's in great shape. It's got a new roof. This is a, a quick way to put slats on a roof, and then you put metal roofing on here. But um, it's just a, a nice way to fix the trailer. Very nicely um, fixed up. Um, if you go to a park and a guy's got a bunch of empty lots like this, you want to look for trailers that are struggling because right now he needs money. He's got a lot of slips that are closed. They're not bringing him any income. He's not making money. You find bad trailers in a park like this, that guy's probably going to want to deal and do something like that. This is just a, an office place. When you go to the mobile home park, some of them have an office like this, a nice little building with an office in it where somebody can go and meet. This has actually got like a place you can rent from the park and have a family get together or a birthday party or something in there. But this is an office where it's not quite so much. You can rent this room for one night or two nights while you're waiting on your trailer, but this is the office, a little bit different than those two. But that's what you want to do. You want to go in the mobile home park, find the office, talk, find out who the owner is. Often you're going to get a person that is the uh, manager, not the owner. You want to tell them, look, I want to fix up some trailers. I'd fix them up. You guys get lot rent. We turn around and sell them and they'd have to meet your criteria to move in. Um, this one, I don't like the park as much because of the large trees. Large trees often can mean damage, and so I try to stay away from parks that have the trees in them. All right, <clears throat> I don't. I tried last time to blow it up, and it wouldn't work, but if you guys will look, Weed Eater has ate up the skirting all the way around the bottom. So this, this, this bottom skirting has to be taken off. The trailer is higher at the back than it is at the front. So you can take half of this skirting a lot of times and bring it forward and cut it off and replace it and then just replace the back half with new skirting. It's a way to save some money. Um, once again, empty spaces. When you see them like this, this guy's making no money. That's a detriment to him, and he's, he's going to want some money. Um, when you do find a trailer, it doesn't matter the age or what it is. What matters is, is the area, and we're going to talk about it here in a minute, is the area growing? Is it moving forward? Is it the kind of place you want to do it? So the trailers may look older or smaller, one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom. You want to know if there's a, an area that has, uh, uh, 
for instance, uh, Mexicans that are coming up and working here in, in Georgia, we have that a lot. So um, you can rent or buy or sell the mobile homes to um, Mexican people. They pay every month. They're sharp people to, to, to sell to. And uh, we often will sell them a, a trailer and then take payments on them. Um, this is a park we own in uh, say in I'm sorry in Little Rock, Arkansas. We had trailer days there once, um, but you want to make sure that when you uh, get into a park that there is ample things like parking, street coverage. You want it to be nice, but you don't want to have those huge trees like coming all around. Matter of fact, this tree here is a problem because it's growing through the tongue, so that needs to be cut off. But um, this is one of the parks we bought. This is a good example. You can see the rust on the side, all the way down the side right there. And uh, so that roof needs to be changed and fixed. Then I would paint the whole trailer inside and out. Um, I'd go to Home Depot or Lowe's and I'd find multiple colors that are the, close to the same. They'd mix or something. Five gallons will usually do the outside of a trailer. And I'll mix it to those five gallons or one color. And that's what I paint the trailer with. I try to save money any way I can. Um, <clears throat> Mailboxes, when you come into a park, you often can tell how many trailers are in a park by how many mailboxes they have. And then it gives you something to go and talk to the owner about, just something to know in your head uh, that you see. Let me get, this is not a trailer. But this is a motor home. And don't let somebody try to sell you that you can fix it up or sell it or do something with it. It's almost impossible to do. Most guys that own parks don't like them. So they're not, it's not very advantageous to, to do that. This is a mobile home, even though it's a smaller type trailer. See how it has skirting, how it has a porch. That was not going anywhere. No one's going to hook up and do it tomorrow and drive off. Probably don't even have tires on it or the tires are rotted. Um, but that trailer is staying there. So that's a little difference in those two. So that one I would buy made and fix up. The other one was a motor home and uh, I, I wouldn't touch it. All right. So let's talk about it. Let's kind of do trailers 101. Let's try to get some information I think that'll help you uh, to go through and, and get some good information to start you on your way of why you should flip trailers or do these things to trailers. Um, somebody asked, are there states and areas that are better than others? There are. And a matter of fact, I think we'll open up at the end. I'll try to answer all your questions. So if you want to write your questions down, because I've probably missed 50 people asking something. Um, so I apologize if I if I missed it. Can I make the pictures larger? Now, there's a good question. Let's see if it does this. Um, oh, you can't see where my cursor is. That's that's why I was trying to use. I got it, Carl. Thank you. I was trying to. Use, let me see if there is a way to make this bigger. Now, does that increase it at all or is it still the same size? Let me try one more thing here and see if I one more thing. Here and see. What do you say, Jody? All the same. Okay. Thank you. All right. Traders 101. Here we go. They are very profitable. Matter of fact, it's one of the most profitable things I've ever done in real estate. It's also a lot of work. So I'm not going to say that it's not. It, it is a lot of work, but it's one of the most profitable things I think I've ever done ever. Um, everyone will think you're crazy. Everybody. I called my wife from Vegas. I said, baby, we're going to do trailers. And she goes like, Boat trailers? I'm like, no, baby. House trailers. She says they have uh, trailers. She's from Hawaii, by the way. We don't. They do not allow mobile homes in Hawaii. They have uh, house uh, trailers that move houses. I'm like, no, baby. They're, they're called mobile homes. And I tried to explain it to her, but it was almost impossible. And she thought I was crazy. If it's done right, it's a six-year plan to freedom. And I'm going to show you that here in a minute of how that would work if you would do it. Um, and what you could do with your life to free yourself up. The residual income is king. When you have money that's paying you and you're done with everything you need to do, you don't have to upkeep or take care of anything anymore. And they're paying you every single month and you don't leave your house for that money. Residual income is the best income that exists. And, and that's what you really do get with trailers. It's a higher return than anything I've seen. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you today like a 74% return on your money. Let me say that again. Not a 7%. Not a 7.4%. I'm going to show you a 74%. Get out your calculators. I'm going to show you how it works. If you've got $10,000, it's the fastest way to grow your money than anything else there is, is mobile homes. It grows it like crazy. you got to have some patience. You're going to have to put in some work. You're going to be busy, but it is absolutely uh, awesome. All right. Where do you want to do this? 
I, I hear people say all the time, I want to do it in my backyard. Now, when I first started, I lived in Kapolei, Hawaii. I was 4,800 and something miles from my closest trailer when I first started. I'm not saying that's for everybody, but for me, I have a lot of friends across the country. I have a lot of people that worked with me back then when I first started. So I had a lot of options. My cousin helped me find multiple mobile homes in Arkansas. My dad helped me find multiple mobile homes in Missouri. I just made them what we're going to talk about here in a little bit called bird dogs. But where do you want to do this? Pick the place that you want to do it. It will work just about anywhere. I'm not saying it works everywhere, but yes, there are some areas that are better than others. There's some states that are better than others. Um, and so that, that's important to me to be in the right area, right place, the right, uh, you know, have the right things around that. Um, as I said, I'm 4,000 miles away from trailers that I own. I'm still 970 miles from the three I have left and getting ready to do some here in Georgia and start to buy some here and uh, start over again of doing a bunch of trailers, doing a bunch of stuff. You don't have to be rich to become rich. A lot of people think, man, I got to have a lot of money to go do something. You could go out to one of these parks. And you're going to have to be aggressive and you could get a hold of every park owner or manager you can. Find somebody who will give you a trailer. Let me say that again. They want to give you a trailer. You want three things. You want them to give you the trailer. You want the trailer to owe nothing from the past. And you want them to give you three months lot rent so you can fix the trailer up. And you have no expenses for three months. It gives you three months to fix it up and sell it. That's what you want to do. You don't have to have a lot of money. Some of these trailers you can fix up. If you put your back, your, your, your labor, and a couple of thousand dollars, you can take a trailer that was given to you and sell it for ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 at 14% interest. So where do you go find them? I like to search on Craigslist. I like to search in little papers. Um, they, they call them penny power, penny saver, things like that. Try to find mobile homes for sale. Here's what's funny. Just as we buy a $100,000 home in, a, in the average city in America, and we put down $20,000 and we finance uh, $80,000. That's about the same way it is with mobile homes. They put down $2,000 and they finance $8,000. It's something like that. The percentage is the same of what we do for our own homes. Often when we buy a house or we put a house together. Now, you can do it, view a lot of these mobile homes and drive by them just on Google Maps. I've looked at four houses today across Savannah and I never left where I was when I started looking at the houses. I don't get in a car anymore and drive somewhere. I look at them on Google first to see if I'm even interested. I look at the subdivision. I look at what's around there. We're going to talk about that in a minute. You want to have certain things that are close to the trailer. Otherwise, you don't want to do it. And I try to buy them in the most advantageous area where I can sell them. And, uh, and, and so that's what you know we, we try to do. Negotiations are huge. Let me tell you about negotiations. You got to be careful when you're buying a trailer because somebody's paid for a trailer and they might have six thousand dollars in it. And then they fixed it up for maybe another six thousand dollars and three or four thousand dollars worth of their labor. And so this thing is really beautiful. Here's the problem. If they have a lot rent of four hundred dollars a month, they're going to pay four hundred dollars a month whether they live in it or they don't live in it. That gets people pretty aggressive pretty quickly. Here's another one. No matter what. Unless they finance, the average trailer buyer cannot walk up and give you six, eight, or ten thousand dollars out of their pocket to get a thousand or two thousand is like pulling teeth. So you got great negotiations to say, look, you've had this thing on the market, you've been trying to sell it on Craigslist. I see the ad goes back seven months. Seven months at four hundred dollars a month, you paid twenty eight hundred dollars alone. You could have taken three thousand dollars less seven months ago and sold that thing. Now you might keep holding on to it. But I would sell it if I were you right now. I would try to get that thing gone. And that's the negotiation. So the first negotiation is with the seller. Negotiation number two, whether I'm talking to the park owner or not, I go to the park owner and say, look, I'm going to fix this thing up. This is going to be one of the nicest trailers in your mobile home park. You're going to love this thing. It's going to be awesome. Here's, all, here's what I need. For me to make it that awesome and make it good, I'm going to need some help. And I think you can help me. Here's how you help me. If you would help me find... Uh, the ability to have three months with no lot rent, and I'm sure you might know a guy that could do it. Give me three months with no lot rent. I'll fill this thing up. I'll put somebody in there that you agree that you'll approve. And when you approve them and we put them in there, me and you're going to make money. You're going to get your lot rent every month, and I'm going to get paid every month. So if you're interested, that's what I'd like to do. And you get these guys uh, to do that with you so that you can you kind of get them on board. If you do it once or twice, 
they might look at two or three trailers they have that are not being done. They don't have the money to fix them up and go, hey, why don't you fix up one of my trailers and let's do this together? Shoot, yeah, split it with them. Whatever you got to do to get in with one of those mobile home park guys, get in there and then build these things and, and, and do them. Know the area. I'm not saying you got to know it personally and go there, but you should know the area. I want to find out what's coming and going. If there's factories going out, I want to know that. If there's uh, Walmart coming in down the street, I want to know that. All those things that are in, uh, advantageous around there, I want to know what's going on. We use a site called bestplaces.net. You can get more information about a zip code, not just a town, but an actual zip code than you could ever imagine. And uh, bestplaces.net, uh, there's uh, several other ones too, city.data.net. Um, there's a lot of them out there, but the best places we found is very easy to work, very good to get used to. You also go to HUD.gov. There's a lot of information on cities, uh, areas, zip codes on uh, HUD.gov that you can get um, good information on. And then we like to go to Rent-A-Meter and make sure what is rent. If a person can't buy the house or what they could rent it, they're probably not going to buy the house. Think of it right now. Um, if, I, if you rented my house, my house is 5,400 square feet. So if you rented my house, uh, my house would probably be somewhere around $2,500 a month here in, in Georgia, maybe $3,000 a month. You rent my house for $3,000 a month. But if you can't buy this house for $3,000 a month, then uh, no one, all the people who are renters, you can't turn them into buyers. What you want to do is people who are renting trailers right now, when they call you and they want to look at your trailer, you turn them into buyers. I try to turn everybody into buyers without stopping. Let me throw something in there too in between there. Let me get to due diligence in, a, in just a moment. When I, when I get a trailer, I like to really advertise things like crazy. And sometimes I'll get 15 or 20 people fill out my advertisement, fill out my information, tell me a little bit about themselves. I do it with Google Docs. And for me, that's the best way I think to, to do it. So I do it with Google Docs. Um, but it's pretty cool and pretty, uh, nifty to bring all these people together, say Saturday at 10 o'clock. So Saturday at 10 o'clock, I'll have six or eight people there looking at the house all at once. And I say, let me explain this to everybody, what we're doing. This is the house. I'm going to figure out who's got the, the most amount of money, who can, you know, can pay well. And I'm going to sell the house that way. I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, going against anybody else of who you are or what you are. I'm only finding out about the down payments. And then I tell them, and sometimes I'll get three buyers from that. And the first guy's got, I got 2,000. The second guy goes, I got 1,700. Third guy goes, I got 1,600. All three of those become my buyers. I tell the 2,000 guy, you can have this one or wait for another one I got, but I'll take your 2,000 down today and you can buy this house right here. You guys, I'll go find two more trailers. You give me a month or two, I'll find two more trailers and sell you a trailer. And I turn that Saturday appointment to buy into multiple items. I, I turn it into a, almost like an auction to sell the one I have. I turn it into a finder for, for trader buyers. I also turn it into a way to get rid of the people who are not serious. If they can't show up at eight o'clock on a Saturday morning because they really want a house, I don't want them moving into something I'm selling because they don't do good. They're not going to pay. They're lazy. And so I, uh, I do all those for a reason and I have a bunch of others. We'll talk about that in, in trailer days when we have trailer days. Um, do all your own due diligence. Don't let someone else tell you everything about a trailer. You go and find out about it. You find out about what's going on, find out about what's owed. When I first started this, I bought the coolest trailer for $600 in St. Charles County. I was so excited. I bought that trailer. I sent the guy my money to my dad. My dad went over. He paid the guy. The guy gave him the title, signed it off, said, all right, that's awesome. I went to the park guy and said, look, can I have three months off? He said, three months off? That trailer, that trailer owes nine months. Right now, you owe me $2,700. Holy cow. So I should have done a little better due diligence. I'm trying to save you from that problem of learning what to do. So do your own due diligence. Find out, is there anything owed of against the trailer? Is there anybody, you know, is there a note on the trailer already? What, you, you want a title, you want what's there. You want to have the ability to know what's going on. Check with the city and county. Uh, they're not required to share info, but if you buy a trailer and eight months later, the park's going to be, you know, draw, drove through with the bulldozer, you're going to have to move that trailer. You better make sure it's the kind of trailer you can move. Nowadays, parks are not taking trailers that are older than 86. So it's older than 1986. A lot of parks in a lot of cities will no longer take them uh, into their park. And so you want to make sure 
that you know what the value year and information is on the trailer. Don't let someone else do it because they'll come tell you when they own it, they'll tell you exactly what's going on. Um, they love fines. They say, oh, you don't have your tag in the window. It's not been in there for two years. You owe a $200 fine. It's just like a car. It has license and information just exactly like a car. Um, then they love to show up at the worst times. When you're trying to fix it up, you're trying to get everything going. You just put about $4,000, $3,000 in the trailer. You're getting ready to sell that thing. And they come and say, look, this thing's got to pass an inspection. And uh, we're going to have to bring an inspector in if it don't pass. You want to try to get in, get the trailers fixed up, get them done as fast as possible, get them on the market, sell them, and that becomes someone else's problem. So that that's your idea is to try to go. Check out the area for industry. I want to know if there's multiple places coming in. Um, if there's just one big company, uh, I bought a mobile home park one time that was right by uh, meat, a meat factory, um, Tyson's Meats for chicken, poultry. and um, that poultry factory uh, started laying people off. And guess what happened to a lot of the people in my park? They have no money. There wasn't just one or two of them. It was like a half of them. And all of a sudden, half of them within the next two or three months weren't paying, had to kick them out, get other people. You want to make sure what industry is in that area, what's going on. Find at least three good employers in an area to, to handle, the large employers that handle maybe uh, Mexican clientele that might handle um, lower pay clientele. Uh, one time I bought a, a, a mobile home in, um, oh, I can't remember the town, but it was called Federer, Elect, uh, Federer Air Conditioning. Federer? Federer Air Conditioning. And um, they had two or three other employees there. And I that trailer stayed full all the time because there was multiple uh, places that would keep people working. And I could, I could sell that thing. Every time it came up, I could sell it. All of them like to be close to a Walmart. I mean, that's pretty simple. Then you want to do let lot rent, cost, and deposit. You want to make sure you know what your costs are while you're going to hold this thing. If it takes you six months to sell a trailer, $400 lot, lot, lot rent can eat up a lot of profit. So you want to make sure you know all that up front, what it is. You don't know what the rules are. I I've, I've went to parts, tried to buy a trailer, went to talk to the manager and said, well, let me tell you why they're selling that. I'm making them move it out. And I said, well, if I buy it, I got to move it out. Yep, I'm getting out of all the trailers that are 1975 and older, 1985 and older, 1972 and older. I've heard it again and again. So you want to know what the rules are of the park that you're buying in and, and, and what's going on there. And then we talked about this a little, while, a little while ago, the past debt on the trailer. People didn't pay lot rent for multiple months. They sell you the trailer. You now own the trailer, but you also own the lot rent debt. Unfortunately, you got to pay it. And there's, I don't know any way around that, maybe without some kind of lawsuit or something. I, I think it'd be wasted anyway. What do they have? They have gas. They have electric. What kind of appliances are in there? Are there appliances in there? Do you need to buy appliances? Sometimes when you finance these people, they don't have enough money for a stove. The first trailer I bought, I showed you. The people bought it. They were making payments. She called me Mr. Gary and called Tiffany Miss Tiffany. And so I went over there to, to fix something. I just happened to be in town from Hawaii. I had just bought the whole park. So now they're paying me for the trailer, paying me for the lot rent. I enjoyed that a lot. And so uh, I knocked on the door and uh, I went in. I fixed something in her sink. I can't remember what it was, just trying to help them out. They needed something. I happened to have the part, um, the sprayer. I'm sorry. Yeah, the little sprayer underneath. So I hooked up her sprayer. She had it. I turned around. She had a hot plate in there. And I'm like, we have a stove right there. Why you have a hot place? Because, oh, Mr. Gary, our stove quit and we don't want to not pay you. So we didn't have any money. So I went to town that day. I went to one of those secondhand places. I said, what's the cheapest stove you got? He said, 75 bucks. I said, how much to deliver it? And I said, the mobile home park. He said, well, I've got somebody else going to the one right behind it. I'll just have them take it. I won't charge you. So for $75, I got this girl a brand new stove. She she called me just a crying, just a crying and a sniffling. Oh, Mr. Gary, it's so great. This is a super good stove. It's got a glass top instead of the the um, I think burners or whatever she called them. And uh, she goes, it's just awesome. When you're gonna be here, I want to bake you some cookies. Now, to be honest, I've seen how the lady keeps her house, and I wasn't eating no cookies baked in that kitchen. But it was awesome that she cared enough uh, that that I helped her out or I'd done something um, kind. Super cool. Uh, just super cool. Um, so you want to know what appliances are in there, whether there's appliances or in appliances, if you need them or don't need them, if you get them or don't get them.
Then check the laws in some town. In Little Rock, it was 76 or near. Now it's 84 or near. In some towns, uh, you want to use, you want to make sure what what you can move a trailer even into that town or around there. So you want to make sure what you're buying. Be very careful what the year is uh, and where it is. We talked about the skirting. You want the skirting to be good. And uh, I, I think I think I try to find somebody. Anytime I'm going to buy a trailer, I'll call somebody and say, "Look, I'll give you ten dollars if you'll just go take pictures." Now, here's a funny thing. My wife has a, a company. Uh, that she does cars and they pay somebody $30 to go and look at a car and take pictures and send that in and they get paid 30 bucks for each car. I'll call somebody for $20 and say, look, I'm going to try to buy a trailer right down the road from you. Maybe I'll call a gas station or I'll call a parts store. And I say, how far do you, how far are you from this address right here? And they'll say, oh, that's just two blocks away. I say, okay, here's what you do. It's a gamble for you. If you go by there and take a bunch of pictures real quick, even knock on the door if you want to and ask to take a couple of pictures inside and tell them you're coming for Gary DuBose. And they, they already know I'm trying to thinking about buying their trailer. You take a bunch of pictures for me and inside and outside and all that. If I buy the trailer, I'll send you $100. If I don't buy the trailer, I'll send you 20 bucks. Give me your address. And for $20, it's cheaper than I dri I'm driving all the way. And that time is in Hawaii. I drive all the way down there. I get all kinds of pictures, all kinds of stuff. For, for 20 bucks, but if I buy it, I give them a hundred dollars. It's even better because now I know uh, what I'm getting, what it looks like. So I find cheap liaison with people to do it. Then I get bird dogs in every area. I don't care where I go. I tell people I buy trailers. That way my phone rings off the wall. I probably get five or six calls a day that are not realtors sending me information on um, mobile homes or on houses. I have a guy that's one of my dump truck guys. He runs dirt for me sometimes on jobs. He brought two or 300 loads out here when I did my house about a, a year before I built my house here. And we made our, our platform where our house is going to be and let it sit for a, a year, maybe six months. Um, Carl, one of my uh, dearest friends, um, came out and watched our place for us and took care of everything, raised my dog. And uh, but I. Uh, that dump truck guy and his brother came and dumped load after load after load at my house. That he has become one of the best finders of real estate I have ever had, and he drives a dump truck. You got to understand, he's driving on the streets every day, up and down roads everywhere. He's a great bird dog, and if he finds something that I buy, he gets paid. I think it's cool. If I don't buy it, he don't get paid. But it only takes him a minute to take a picture and send me a picture and an address, and he does it. Have every manager on your side. I absolutely love to talk to managers, and, and I'll pay them. I say, look. You find me somebody in here selling the house. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Somebody's in here selling a, a mobile home, a house, and I get a chance to buy it. Then when I buy it, I'll give you $50 for every one you find me. You'd be surprised how many of these people sitting at a park would take $50. If you called my mobile home park right now in Salem, Missouri, and you said, hey, I'd give you fifty dollars for any one of your trailers that, that come clean, that, that come open, and buy it. I guarantee you, even though I've told her not to do it, I assure you that lady would take fifty bucks. <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind, and I, I wish she was more loyal to me, but the woman needs fifty bucks, so I guarantee you she would take it. Get that manager on your side. That's what you want, you know. Um, all right. If it's near you. You do the deal. If it's a little far away from you, get a good title company or somebody, anyone who can can sign in front of a notary. Uh, that's I say. Sometimes I'll use a title company. Sometimes I'll just go to a bank and use a bank. But anybody who can um, um, do the paperwork for me, uh, we got pretty good at a place down in uh, Jacksonville, Arkansas. The UPS store had done so many of my trailers that I sold that it was like having my own little title company in the in the um, you at UPS store, that woman knew exactly how to fill out. If they had a question, she was answering questions about my my uh, contract because she had seen so many of them. It's pretty funny. Then do you need movers? Do you got to get it out there? You need to know what, what the plan is, what you got to do for it. I am a park only guy. I don't like land holders. Um, we're looking at one right now. I offer $22,000 here. If I put 10,000 in and fix it up, I've got $32,000 in it. My loan on 32,000 is $194 a month. If I take $194 a month, the place rents for $900 a month. I'll make $700 a month after it's fixed up. 
So sometimes land holding is okay. For the most part, though, if you're wanting to get in cheap, and that's what we're talking about, how to get in for less money, you can get into parks right now, sometimes $1,000, sometimes $2,000. Sometimes parks will give you a trailer. So it just depends on what it is and why I do it that way. I like to stay in an average of have no more than $3,000 to $5,000 in any given trailer. This is where everybody screws up. So I hope everybody shuts up right now, stops, picks up your pencil, and write down $3,000 to $5,000. That is my, my low is zero, of course. But then when I fix them up, I put boards in them. I fix the floors. I put a little carpet. I get, I get to go buy remnants from carpet stores. I don't care if the rooms are the same color or not. I find the cheapest way to do these mobile homes, $3,000 to $5,000 in them. From the time I start till the time I'm finished, that's how much money I want to have in them. Then I want to sell them for at least two times my money, sometimes three times my money. Um, I like parks where the rent is $150 to $250 a month so that you can still get $250 for your trailer or $300 for your trailer. People are paying $550 a month. It's not the price of an apartment, but it's a nice price to have for their home. And so I try to stay at that price for the, for the park. Then know what your holding costs are. Know how much it's going to cost you to hold it. If it's in the wintertime, you're going to have to heat the thing so your pipes don't freeze. In the summertime, you want nothing to buckle inside, so you have to keep the air conditioner on just a little bit. Try to keep it just a little bit cool in there, uh, under 90. As long as you keep it under 90, pretty much everything will be okay. Those are some of your holding costs. You want to think about what those things are. All right. Then I like to test an area. Somebody asked uh, a while ago, um, or some, area, uh, some areas, uh, Thrives and Knox asked, I probably said that wrong, but I apologize. Um, what areas, some areas are better than other. I like to test areas with ads. So I'll put an ad in a, a little, um, one of them little papers, and then I'll make it a Google ad where they got to go to their phone or they go in and they put that ad, they, they punch on an ad or in Craigslist, they punch that ad. And then that self-populates, they put all the information in there. This is my name. This is my age. This is how much I make. This is what I can pay. This is a little story about my family. This is a little story about why we're buying a mobile home. And I get all that information. Then I pick, I, I weed them out, pick the best of the best, and I test an area for ads to see who's who's uh, the best to do that. When I do that, I build what's called a buyer's list. My buyer's list is on Google. And I go through the whole list and make it up. We'll talk about that when we do uh, trailer days. I try to go through that a little bit and talk about it. I found out the usury laws in the state. All you got to do is put in usury Georgia, usury Texas, usury Arkansas, and it usually gives you a 9%, 10%. Now, here's the thing. Credit card bills sometimes can be 23 to 25 to 29% interest. Usury of borrowing money when it's a, a mobile home is a little different than just usury in a state. On the average, I charge 14% across the board. There are two states that I work in. I charge 19%. Uh, there's one state I work in, I charge 7%. You say, oh, what is that? I want all that information. Start, get on Google. And the information is out there in every single state. Find out what the usury laws are. That lets you know how much you can loan money to people without getting in trouble. Don't be afraid to charge. You're taking all the gamble. You know why credit cards will do 25% interest? Because they're taking all the gamble that they're never going to get into that money and somehow they're going to have to settle for less. Include your cold and closing costs. You say, I don't have any closing costs. If you send them to a notary and you have to pay for it, you have closing costs. If you wrote up the paper and you typed it up, you have closing costs. On average, I'll charge $200 to $300 to close any loan that I do uh, when I'm doing them for, for mobile homes. Interest should be high. I take the chances. I'm getting my money's worth out of it. So I'm not afraid to charge them for everything that we do in those items. Decide what to do or not by what you want out of it. If you're trying to make good money, don't be afraid to charge. If it doesn't sell, then you can always go down, but you can't go to somebody and look, I know I said 7,000, but I want 10,000. Or you can't say, I know I said pay 300 a month, but I want 500 a month. So start high and you can always come down. And figure out what you want for it, how you want to do it. Some will sell as is because of owner financing. So because you're financing, you tell, look, I know it needs a little carpet. I know it needs some paint. You, why don't you do that? And I'll finance it, but you do all the little extra work as part of your own stuff to fix it up. And I'll sell you the trailer. I was wanting $17,000. i will sell it to you for $14,000. Now, you would have sold it for $10,000. doesn't matter. You sell it for less money. They're like, oh, I got a great deal. I got this much money off. If I paint it myself, it's going to be a couple hundred dollars. Yep, I'll do that. And let them fix it up and sell it as is. I, I put every trailer on the market as it is when I first get the trailers. 
And if I can turn around and make two, three thousand dollars and 14 percent of my money and I don't got to pick up, pick, pick up a hammer or do a single thing, I'm all for that. Keep repairs to safe and livable. Remember what I said? Usable. You want it to be usable. That's all. You want people to usable and livable. People can live in there. I'm not saying be a slumlord. You're not the slumlord because you're not getting rent. When they buy a house from you, they're paying for the shell. What they do inside that shell is all their own choice and what they want to have or how they want to live in it. Remember that you're not creating new homes. I, there's two things that happen all the time when people flip houses or they flip trailers. They start making them really nice. My dad, when he first started making them, he's like, son, I got 6,700 in that thing and I'm going to sell it for 10 grand. I said, dad, that's absolutely crazy. You should sell that thing for 15 or 17 grand, but you shouldn't have put that much money into it. Why in the world do you have, oh, I want it to be nice for people. I'm like, dad, you're not selling to people that can afford that. You're selling to people who they, they, they have a lower class income. They're going to give you a little bit less money per month. You're going to have to fix it that way and make it that way. Then listen, don't let them be in control. Remember how I said I have everybody come at the same time in the morning on Saturday at 8 a.m. And those who want to buy it, who has the most money and ready to buy it right now. I'm in control. Then when I get ready to sell, sell them, I go, look, you're going to sign a contract. And I want you to know that I, I think your kids right there, those three kids are cute. And your wife, she seems like a really nice lady. She really does. But let's make something clear right now. I will have the sheriff come over and pick up your stuff and cart it out to the street. And I'll watch your children and your wife as they walk down the street hand in hand, wondering why you didn't pay the bill. And that man kicked us out of the house. I'm not going to be a bad guy. I'm going to be an honest guy. You're going to be an honest guy. And you're going to be without a home if you don't pay me. I scare the living snot out of them um, when I'm selling. Now, I'm, by the way, I'm not allowed to take the money at our mobile home parks. And I'm not allowed to take our money on the houses. And here's why. Remember that lady with the, the um, she made cookies. She's going to make cookies and she got a, a stove. That lady would call about every four months and say, I can't pay this month, Mr. Gary. I got this. And I think, oh, heck, it's only $250. Let me put it on the end. You don't pay. You pay extra $150 fine. And I'll just let my wife and Terry are like, would you stop that? We're not getting any money in, in every month because you keep letting everybody get away with the rent. You don't realize it, but you did that two months ago. So now they've only paid six months of rent this whole year. I'm like, oh, my goodness. So I'm not allowed to answer the phone anymore. But when I start up front, I scare them to death that they better pay or I'm going to take them to the cleaners. And by the way, I take them to the cleaners in a different way. Qualify them up front. Let the park. Tell them, go over and see the park guy. Get approved for the park. If the park will approve you, I'll approve you for the trailer. Half the time, them parks run background checks. Half the time, them parks will run finances, see if their credit score is over 500. That let them do it and say, if the park approves you, show me a letter from the park they're approving you, and I'll prove you to buy my trailer. I try to stay under $500 a month or $165 a week. I have taken weekly payments, $165 a week. This depends on the trailer, how good or bad it is. Always double your money before interest. So don't look at the profit at the end. Double your money before interest. So if it's $10,000 you've got in the trailer, sell it for $20. If it's $5,000 you got in the trailer, sell it for $10. That's the least. A $5,000 trailer to me sells for fifteen grand, fourteen nine. And then I say, look, you can put $2,000 down. And if they come in, they balk at that. They got a lot of that. So I'll tell you what right now. I want to sell this trailer today. How about this? You come up with $12,000. Uh, I mean, you make payments on $12,000. You come up with $1,500 right now. I'm going to put you in this trailer for $13,500. And I'll start taking payments next month. I'll do whatever it is. But I, I, I always double my money. And I never uh, let them get away from interest. Matter of fact, I do my one year interest up front and I'll show you that here in just a second. Um, big time late penalty. I think I said that earlier. I make them pay through the nose. If they're late, they're going to pay because I am. I can't stand somebody who don't pay the bills. All right. So let's let's look at the money. This is where you ought to get out your calculator and you ought to get out a pencil. Let's look at the money. And by the way, this is recording. Um, Jody says we can go back and do it. Good night. Look at that. I, I, I got to move. We got. I'm supposed to be done in three minutes. There's no way it's going to happen. You're just going to get extra tonight. If you can't stay on, I understand, but I'll, I'll go through. All right. So your trailer costs, let's say you find you. I like to buy them for a thousand or get them given to me. Let's say you buy a trailer for $2,500. You clean it up. You fix it up nice. Now you got $600 in it. That's $3,100.
You price it at least double. So let's say 6,200. I would put it at about 8,200 if that was me. That's about where I would be. So let's say 8,200. But 2,500, you got 600 for paint. You got $3,100 in it. You price it up at uh, $8,200. You take $300 a month. Now listen, at $300 per month, you get $3,600 a year. If they're on time and don't have any bad payments, and you're taking 300 a month, you're getting 3,600. Now remember, we only had 3,100 in it. So at 10.5 months, roughly you're paid off. The trailer costs 2,500, then you got to clean, you got per month. I charge 14% interest. So let me show you how that works. The trailer is 7,000, 14% interest for the first year is 7,980, right? So now we have 7,980 they owe on day one. Day one, that's what they owe. Now they make payments, that's $3,600. When they make payments at $3,600, oops, sorry about that. Let me see if I can go back. I don't know what happened there. But they make $3,600, here's how it works. Year one, they paid $3,600. There's a balance then that's brought forward for year two. That's $4,680. I take that times my 14%, $613. So now they owe $5,293. Uh, the $5,293, now they pay that out. They pay $3,600. And as they pay out $3,600, at the end of that year, they owe $1,693. You take that, and you got to, of course, use your interest on that as $237. You add that together. Now they owe $1,930. They pay out six months. They pay $300 a month. And then the last month, they pay $130. Here's how that looks. If they take all the balances, year one, year three, year one and two, and add them together, here's what we made. On our $3,100, we made our profit of $3,900 if we did the 62. If we did the 82, we made $5,900. Now, let me show you something. If you just take that profit, $3,900, and then you add the interest, that's what we're going to do, add the interest there. You would have made, uh, and don't forget, we had to do our paperwork because we charged for closing the deal, right? You'd have made $5,955 profit from $3,100. Now, what you've got to do is you've got to take 3,000 uh, divided by, I mean, 5,955 divided by 3,100. And then you got to divide that by, I think it's uh, whatever the months are, 2.4 months. If you divide that out, the return on this trailer, a $3,100 trailer, is 74.3% on your return. Let me say that again because somebody might not have caught it. That means if you had $100,000 this year and you put it in that trailers, at, at trailers, next year you would have $174,000. If you did that same thing again, the next year you would have Three hundred, uh, three hundred and forty-two thousand or something. I can't remember what the amount is. It just keeps going. Now let's go back. If you just did one trailer, that's all we're talking about. Just one trailer. The total profit from it, and we are paid back now in ten point three months. Now here's how you do multiplication. Everybody pay attention. If you made five thousand nine hundred and fifty-five dollars from three one hundred, but in ten months you're paid back, almost eleven months. Then on the 12th month, you should be able to buy another trailer. In 10 months from that date, you ought to be able to buy another trailer. So at the next point, after 10 months, at 22 months, you ought to have two trailers being paid for. Now, you're going to do it faster because now you're going to pay it off faster. So now at after that, it's going to be 17. After that, it's going to be... 12 after that it's going to be nine if you do five trailers you're paying a, tra a trailer off um let's see 17 12 9 yeah you you're paying a trailer off every three and a half months so if you don't do anything with the money for the next four months i mean ne next four years and you just keep turning it over and every time you get the money back you put it in trailers every time you get the amount of that trailer that's paying buy another trailer with it then two trailers then four trailers then five trailers as you continue to do that in six years you won't have to work in six years you'll be set some of you are looking at retirement you're going what am i going to do for retirement this is a good way to start your future to make that happen 
19.66 months payments still coming in. Is that crazy? When we pay back for the third one, do it again and again and again, and it gets less and less each time, but you make more and more money off the same original $3,100 because you're doing two trailers, then three trailers, but all those are still paying. Even though you're paid off and buying another trailer, you're still using the first $3,100 on, on, from the very first trailer. It's an amazing uh, thing to do. And how's that song go? Rinse, rinse and repeat. That's what you got to do uh, is, is continue it again. Make it happen again and again. Don't stop the process that pays you. This is what most people do. They get tired or it's a lot of work. And it is. Here's what it teaches you. It teaches you negotiations. It teaches you buying. It teaches you repairs. It so prepares you that when you make enough money in flipping trailers at a low financial output. Listen, if you go tomorrow and flip a house and you've got $30,000 and you go borrow the money and something happens and you lose $100,000, you're probably never going to be in real estate again. But if you go buy a trailer for $1,000 or $1,500 and you put $1,000 in it, you got $2,500, anyone on this call can make up that $2,500 and go, look, I lost that money. It didn't work out there, but I can do it again. That's the advantages of mobile homes and that's the advantages of doing that. And I think it'd be super advantageous advantageous to do it. We help our investors sometimes. We show our investors what to do with the small items and how to get into them. We've had guys that have been with us three and four and five years on them. Um, free lot rent for three months. We talked about that. I think I was trying to make sure I didn't catch, didn't miss anything. Um, we have, we have uh, a couple of uh, mobile home parks of our own and mobile home parks of others that have some traders that if you want to invest in one and try one, We'd help set you up where we know the manager. He already has crews that would go in and fix them up. And he gives you opportunity to make a little bit of money. If you're interested in something like that, you can tell Jody and she'll do it. All right. Now let's open up the questions. Jody, can we turn microphones on? Or I tell you what, if you want to type in or ask a question, how do I know what's the most recent question? Oh, I can see. Okay. All right. So if you want to type in or you have a question, I'd like you to do that now. You can just go ahead and type it into me and um, I, I can see it. Let me try to answer the ones that were here. Um, areas, are there uh, areas or states better than others? There are um, states that are better. I don't do it in California anymore. I don't do it in Oregon. I won't do it in uh, Washington. You have to have a license and things in those states. I, I don't want to have to do that. I don't go up north because I don't like the cold. That's the only reason I don't like the snow. There's no other reason for it except I don't like snow. So my wife and I don't like to go up in those places. So if I got to go to one or two trailers, uh, unless I have somebody right there, I have a really good friend named Joel. And if he wanted to do trailers up in Minnesota, I'd do trailers because he's in Minnesota. Um, I think Jody, Jody just sent out for everybody. Trader days are September 13th through the 14th. If you'll email Jody at the finest place for more information and trailer days generally is a, I think it's $300 or $400, uh, something like that. And uh, you come stay at a hotel. We go actually work in trailers. And then every night we go back to the hotel and we talk until about 10, 11 o'clock at night. And then we get up the next day and go work on trailers. So you get both sides. You get all the numbers. I give you all my contracts. I give you all my information. So you're in, in, interested in trailer days and you want to share this uh, video with anybody. I'm pretty sure when we're done, uh, you'll get an email and it'll show you how you can share this with anybody you want to. Um, maybe you want to partner up with a couple of people. But the best way to learn this is Trader Days. How can you become an investor? I live in California, but it's so expensive here. Boy, you're not kidding. That's absolutely correctly. If you will contact me directly, Gary at thefinestplace.com. So just like Jody's, but it's G-A-R-Y, Gary at thefinestplace.com. Or contact Jody. She can set you up. And if you want to try to be one of our investors that do it with us, uh, we would set you up, hook you up. I have a guy here in uh, Savannah. His name is Brandon. We're getting ready to do them right here in time. There you go. Thank you, Jody. We're getting ready to do them right here in this area. And Brandon would be exceptional. He works with me. I watch what he does. I'm right there with him. So it's just the same as working with me. Um, and uh, super, super sharp guy. Uh, he's getting ready to do some traders of his own. And then we have some that, you know, people would want to put up some of the money. We would have all our crews fix them up, get them set up, get you paid. You get you paid out. And we usually we usually we do uh, on trailers. Often we'll do a 50 50 split. I do not do that on houses. Uh, we do a lot of investing on uh, flipping houses, but I, my investors do not get that kind of, uh, I don't do 50-50, I do 80-20. So they get 20% of the profit and uh, they don't 
uh, leave the house. So if you want to contact me uh, about doing that, please shoot, shoot me an email, Gary at thefinestplace.com, and we can talk and see what you have and what you want to do, and absolutely love for uh, you to do that. Somebody else, any more questions? I want to try to answer any of your questions. Uh, I got a text that says, um, if you have a trailer and you don't know how to market it, can you explain the marketing process better? And uh, this is somebody who's actually been to one of my classes, but have not been to uh, our trailer days. On trailer days, I actually go through and show the marketing, how to set it up and how to make that work. That's a That would take a whole, um, I think there is a, actually is a video um, on uh, YouTube forward slash the deal funders. YouTube forward slash the deal funders that actually goes through and shows you how to make a um, a buyer's list, I think. But anyway, uh, if you want to look at that, you can. I think it's a class we had in uh, California. But um, you, you might have to do a little research. Don't don't write me and ask me which one it is. I'd have to look at it just like you. So go ahead and feel free to take your time to look at it. Um, and you're welcome to, to, to watch the video and, and learn a little bit how to set those up. It's in Google Docs. It's a self-populated thing. They fill out their information. It's pretty cool. Easy way to do that. So uh, we we rent to own vice alone. Why don't you rent to own? Good. Um, I don't rent to own because when you rent to own, you are now liable for things that are in the trailer. Rent to own by law. When you say those words, when you use the word rent, um, we, my wife's a principal broker. We own a real estate company. Uh, she's also uh, licensed here in Georgia. Um, and in Hawaii, um, when you say the word rent, you have liabilities now that you do not have when you sell. So if you lease somebody a car or you rent somebody your car and they smash it, you have a smashed car. If they tear it up, you have a you have a torn up car. If they have a water pump go out, you have a water pump go out. When you um, sell to somebody under a contract that, by the way, is more stringent than a rent. They have to give you the trader back. You are on title as the lien holder and you get the thing back no matter what. But while it's got a hot water heater down, why it's got a problem, why it needs steps, while it needs this, those aren't your responsibility. But if you are renting, HUD will make you responsible. They can go to government and the government can make you responsible to fix things in that house. If you're doing 50 trailers, you're asking for a hassle. Now, if you're doing one or two trailers and you rent to own, that's fine. I know some people that do rent to own. We have a guy, I have a, one of our ladies that I was talking about earlier. All of hers are rent to own. If you want to gamble that, it's fine. But you do 50 of these, you're going to be in a lawsuit with somebody and HUD's going to take you to the cleaners um, because you're going to supply everything that house needs. Then they're going to come in and tell you, oh, it needs to be rewired. Oh, it needs a new, new plumbing. This shower is broken. And all of a sudden, someone else is controlling you. That's a silly thing to do when all you are is a finance guy. If you think of it this way, Somebody buys a car at the bank and they went to the bank tomorrow. They knock on the banker's door there at the at the bank. He comes up, unlocks the door, says, what can I do for you? He says, sir, I've got my car out here. I, I, you gave me a loan on my car, right? He goes, oh, yes, Mr. Jones, I remember you. Great. What can I do for you? He says, my water pump went out. That banker's going to go, well, that's sad. That's, that's sad. I know. Them water pumps, they're a bad deal sometimes. Hey, by the way, your payment is due on the third. Because he doesn't have anything to do with that car except financing. And the only time he takes that car back is at the end. That's why I don't rent to own. Um, even though no matter what you make it, HUD does not recognize full on rent. Like like uh, our, our assisted living facility, we own the building as Bomac Enterprises, Inc. Uh, a different group owns the actual business, which is called Florida ALF. If you sue Florida ALF, they don't own a building. You get nothing. And if you sue um, BOMAC, we have a triple net lease that makes sure that the ALF covers insurance for both of us. So I don't pay anything and I save it that way. So that's why we do it. Uh, use safe trailers need to be safe. Do states have requirements for trailers? Yes. Um, Jay, um, many, many of the trailer uh, requirements are the same as you would have for a house. Let me, let me say something very important. If you fix a place up, and don't make it safe, and somebody puts their kids on there, you know, sh shame on you. Th this is where a family's gonna live. And when I say livable and usable, I mean really livable, not something that is a fire hazard in two two weeks. Don't do not do that. Um, you, you, need to, you need to have something that is, uh, uh, you know, somebody can live in. 
So when I say that, I'm, I'm sounding cheap because I'm cheap. They may not have the best carpet, but the carpet's not going to make them sick. They may not have the best uh, water pressure in the shower, but they're going to have a shower. Um, what I don't do is put people in something that's just horrible. They can fall through the floors or have other problems. That's that's wrong. Don't 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 be that way. When you sell a trailer, it should be nice. You know, you don't got to be Ken DeBose, my dad. You don't got to be him, that Taj Mahal guy. No, you don't need to be him. And my dad, by the way, somebody's water pump, my water heater goes out. He'll go over and say, look, if you go buy the water heater, I'll come help you put it in. I'm like, dad, why do you do that? But my dad is the nicest, kindest individual that walks upon the face of this earth. He's amazing. He's an amazing man. Crazier in a loony bin and out there when it comes to people because he does way too much. But he's my father and I love him how he is. But um, uh, I, I just don't I don't I don't rent to own and I do make them very safe. Um, there are states that actually do inspections. You do not have to have a license, by the way, to fix up a mobile home or to get it ready for somebody to look at or inspect. But um, it is uh, there is some states that have you inspect them. And I don't think that's a bad thing. If they come through and tell you this is wrong, that's wrong. I think you ought to have a GFCI by the bathroom, GFCI by the kitchen. There's just some things you should do out of uh, human decency to make that. I like to have good, solid steps. When I sell them, I like to be nice. How they tear them up after the fact, that's their problem. But I try to make them a little more usable. All right. Anybody else? I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, tonight. Uh, we'd love to have you at Trader Days, September 13th through the uh, 14th. Is that only, it's only two days? But we get there the night before. So you really would come in on the, we'll tell you that, but you come in on the 12th. We have classes that night and then uh, go from there. Uh, know where I was going Oh, I see. OK, good. No, Jay, I wasn't trying to think. I wasn't saying that for your purpose. I was saying that for everybody's purpose. Um, you're, you just made me think of it. Um, you, you do want to be as cheap as possible when you buy stuff. I, I go to reha the rehab stores. Um, I buy stuff that's secondhand. I, I buy stuff at garage sales, lights and things like that when I'm doing a trailer. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> when I'm putting them in. But um. Uh, if you're not a contractor, the best thing to do is is look at it like your home, you know, not like super nice like your home. But you know, what do you have in your home that's that's OK? Good outlets. You have good plumbing and you have a nice place you can put a bed. You have a nice place where you can take a shower. You have a, a toilet that doesn't fall through the floor. That That's that's what you're wanting to do. Um, other than that, it's just, a, and I have lots of videos, um, Jay, online that you can go look at where we walk through trailers, I think, and show some of what we do. And so you're more welcome just to go find those, uh, yacht, uh, YouTube forward slash the deal funders. It'd be a good place to see some of those things on there. Uh, trailer days, we think we're going to have one of two choices. We haven't decided yet. We'll let you know, uh, about a month and a half out so you can buy your tickets. They're either going to be in Salem, Missouri. We stay in a place there called, I think it's Holiday Inn. If they still kept their flag, it was Holiday Inn years ago. Um, or we're going to go to um, Little Rock, Arkansas. And uh, we'll stay at a, what's a Days Inn right by the airport. And then we'll drive over from there. A few people have cars and maybe a few people rent cars. We'll all um, go over together. I'll bring down tools and have all kinds of stuff there. So one of those two, I would venture to say that it's going to be in Salem, but I don't know yet. Um, but that's kind of our plan. Um, we'll let you know, guys. We'll let you guys know about a month out um, where we're going to be. Make sure you talk with Jody. Tell her you're interested. Please share this video with anybody you think we could use some money. I did this because I want people to know that there's a good way for people that don't have a lot of money to make a great return. Listen, 74%. Even if you did half that, you screwed up and you did half that. A 30% return on 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 any kind of income is absolutely amazing I, I hope you would share this with everybody you can everywhere you can um I, i'm doing it because I, I just believe people ought to still be good to people i'm giving out information for free trying to help as much as i can i've got gobs of videos on mobile homes for free so feel free to pass those around too and uh um love to see you guys at trailer days love to see you guys join us for uh the deal funders now we have one coming up there here in uh, savannah we'd love to have you guys come out for a class at the deal funders uh, make sure you talk to Jody if you're interested in finding houses for us. Uh, you get 15% of the profit. Um, and so if you want to know a little bit about that, uh, Jody can give you that information, tell you what it costs. 
I, I return 100% of what you pay for my class if you do a deal with me, one deal. You do one house with me, you get 100% of what you paid for my class back. So I actually lose money for you to become a deal funder and be successful. I lose money on the class and make money on the deal. And uh, because I don't take the money from the class, uh, that's how Jody makes her money too. So she gets some money, the room gets some money, and there's a great opportunity for you if you want to be a deal funder with us and learn how to do some house flipping. Um, I watch it help you all the way through. Uh, we got a new guy that's coming in, um, just getting started with us now. Uh, Brandon, I talked about earlier, and he would be one of the guys too, working on some of the houses, watching some he's learning. And so you'd be working with him some too. We'd love to have you be a part of the deal funders if you let us know. All right, everybody. Appreciate you guys being on the call. And I hope you learned a lot. Put some questions out there. Don't be afraid to email me or email Jody. One of us can answer those questions. Jody's been with me a long time. She can probably answer the question just as good as I can. But uh, Jody, I appreciate all your hard work hun, and how good you guys are. Punch Jason for me and tell him I'm missing. And we love you guys and the kids. Everybody have a great night and God bless you and uh, uh, keep on going. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. You guys have a great night. Good night, everybody.